Hi, I hope you're well. Today we're going to look at the tools of the trade, so to speak. All the little things I use to help me in my planner life. So the first tool uh, I'll start with is my printer. It's an HB printer and for me it's specifically planner related. I don't really use it for everything else. And what I use it specifically for is printing out the stuff that I use in my memory planner or if I want to print out sticker digitals and stuff like that. There's a scanner at the top, there's a little part that pulls out for when the paper comes out so it doesn't, you know, fall as it's printing. There's a little section at the bottom that the paper stays in when it prints. And it's been a fantastic resource for me in, like I said, being able to print my own things in my thumbnails that I print in my memory planner and digital stickers that you can buy um, and are given free through different Facebook groups and stuff. And then that leads me on to the paper that I use with it and that is this sticker paper. It is, uh, it's from Online Navels and it's repositionable so whenever you put it down you're able to lift it up. Now unless you've had it down for months or something if you've just put it down, you can pick it up again easily and move it. Because it's really handy for what I need it for because sometimes you put a sticker down in a layout and think it would look better somewhere else or sometimes you put it down and it's completely crooked and you want to fix it. And I love the fact that this allows you to do that. The sticker paper I had before, once it was down, it was down and it was a nightmare trying to use. So this has definitely upped my sticker game. Also, it is really good quality and it could be a combination of the printer that I use as well as the sticker paper, but it prints really good quality images and I'm really, really happy with it ever since I got it. The next tool is this and this is a laminator. I got this from Amazon. So in planner land, if you want to make your own dashboard, if you want to make a cover for your sticker books, if you want to make your own covers for planners, if you maybe have tickets that you went to a concert in your memory planner and you use a coil planner, you could laminate the tickets, stick on a coil clip from Erin Condren, one of these that have 3M. So you would stick it here and then you clip it into the book. So there's lots of different things you can do with it, but it's handy to have at your disposal uh, if you are a crafter or a planner. And then along with that, I have laminating paper and I just got this from Amazon. I don't even remember the name of the brand. I'll put it down in the description along with everything I'm showing today, but I have this on hand as well. So whenever I need to laminate something, if I ever do, it's ready to go. And this is a guillotine that I got recently. This I have used to cut release paper that I got and I bought release paper so that I could make my own sticker book but the release paper came in an A4 size and I used the laminator to cut it in half so that it would fit in here as an A5 size and it just means that I can mass cut things without sitting with a pair of scissors cutting tons and tons and tons. So you just put your page under there, this holds it in place, this helps you align it so I had it set for A5 and then cut it and that's it. The next thing then is this and this is a dynamo label maker. I find this handy in planning because of for labeling different categories in my sticker book but you could also if you had used a ring bound planner system you could label the categories in that sense like you could have a to-do section, you could have a um, weekly layout, daily layout all in one planner and use these clear uh, plastic dividers and I love the fact that I can easily peel this off and rename it to something else. This uh, this here is something that I use in my personal life as well as my planning life. I label jars of ingredients, I label um, tubs to keep your Christmas decorations in, all that, but I just wanted to show it in my planner tools because I do regularly use it to label my sticker book. Um, and I do think that it was really handy to have that. And I use clear, you just buy these tapes, I use a clear tape. These next three things are all part of my love of my Distress Ink. Mm. These are actually stamps and I, it's the only stamps I own and I've never really been a stamper so I didn't have a category in its own for it. But I use them with my Distress Inks 
if you wanted to in your planner, um, it's more whenever I was bullet journaling, I would have had this. Um, it was actually gifted to me by my mother-in-law. Um, but you could write the days of the week, write your name at the front of your planner, and it just detaches like this, all the different letters. And then you connect, just say you're writing the word Anne, <laughs> you connect them together, and then you have a stamp, and then you can put it in your ink and stamp the word Anne. Oh, that would be the wrong way around, like that. And then this is for using with the distress inks. I would use distress inks in my planner, just for example, if I have a stencil um, for making it look like there's a coffee stain, you would put this into the distress ink and then rub it over the stencil. I will say there's ones that I've since discovered that have a domed end, whereas this one, as you can see, has a flat end. And whenever you're using it, it's hard not to end up with a really obvious circle being pressed down when you're using it, whereas the dome ones are supposed to um, help with that. But what you do is you would just buy the dome sponges and this comes off and then you can replace the new sponge. Um, and these are very handy to have. I got mine on Amazon, but you can get them in all sorts of different crafty type shops. And then this is the only stencil that I own and it is for coffee splats. So like I said, whenever you have that little sponge, you would push down on top of it with the ink and whatever stain of distress ink you want and it looks like you have coffee stains in your planner. Let me see if I can find where I've done it. So see there, it looks like I set the coffee mug down. Um, that's this one, the circular one. And then here I've just used the sponge to blend distress ink all around the edges. This was a coffee thing. And then as well, I have this, and these are paintbrushes. And I use these with my distress inks too, but you could use them with paints. So what you do is you press the distress ink down onto something acrylic or something plastic and spray it or wet it. And then you're able to paint with the distress inks. And I have done it once or twice in my planner. This tool is a heated up tool. Whenever you're using your distress inks in your planner or your drawing, for example, or painting or anything that requires, like say you had acrylograph pens and you didn't want to wait forever for it to dry, you want to be able to move on, you just plug this in. So, and you have this button here that you turn on and it puts out heat and you're able to, sorry if you can't hear me. <laughs> yeah, you're able to dry it and it speeds up the drying process. The next thing then is a hole punch. And this is an A5 hole punch. And I did use it as part of my sticker setup, um, my sticker book setup to punch the A5s. But it's handy to have just in general. If I ever do get into ring bound planning, I'll have it there for that. And I can add things to my, like for example, if I use the Erin Condren ring bound agenda, I could add as many pages as I want when I want because it's a standard A5 size with a standard A5 punch. But for now, for me, its use is for my sticker books and for punching the release paper. Right, the next thing then is something I got recently and it's very cute, <laughs> but it is a corner rounder. Sometimes, and personally, it's a personal preference. I think that rounded edges look better than pointy edges. And honestly, there is no real logical explanation. I just do. But when you try to cut them, which is what I've been doing for a very long time, when you try to cut them yourself with a pair of scissors, they never quite look right and they're never quite the same on each corner. And this just makes it really easy. So let me get a scrap bit of paper. So you have your part at the bottom that catches the paper that you can empty it. You have, these come in two other colors, I think as well. What you do is you get the corner of the page. So let's start with small and it has a point here and a point here, not a point, like a, what am I saying? Like it's just like a section, sectional, it's really obvious. Don't know if you can see it on camera. And you just put it in like this, lining it right up. So you wouldn't, you know, you're not putting it in like that, you're putting it in so it's right in, lined up. And you just push down. And as you can see, that made a little small rounded section. And then let's do, Sorry, I apologize for Cody. I don't even know what she's growling at. Um, that's the medium one. And then the large one. There, 
it just makes your life easier. Anyway, yeah. And if you're wondering why I just tipped them on my desk, it's so that I can show you this next thing. I am a sketcher and I will draw with my pencil and rub out and you end up with little bits of rubber all over your desk and it drives me to distraction. Or when you're cutting, you have little bits of paper. And this little, I think it's T-I-H-O-O, -O, I don't know how you say that, Tai Hu. Um, it's just a hoover <laughs> that um, sucks up all the little annoying bits all over your desk. So if you're a glitter user, this would be quite handy. So what do we see? And just like that, it's gone and out of your way. So yeah, there's the brushes at the bottom. There's the on off button. You can unscrew here and change the batteries. It's just battery operated. You push down here. Look, as you can see, I haven't emptied this in a while. It's all the little bits of rubber from rubbing pencils out. So really handy little gadget, really glad I got. Now this, this is a Tombow mono correction tape. I love this thing. There isn't a week uh, or a day, not even a week that goes by where I don't use this in my planner because I have a tendency to make spelling mistakes. <laughs> I just not pay attention and write things that I shouldn't. And it's really handy. And this is by far the best one I have found. This one is 16 millimeter. So it lasts for ages and I get them in bulk from Amazon and use them constantly. So you just hold it like this and it's very smooth and you just roll it over and rewrite. Simple as. And I really wish they existed when I was younger because we used to have to use that liquid version of Tipex that you put on with a brush and you were sitting there painting over words and I ended up looking like a complete disaster. This is by far better. Thing then are rulers. And I have three again. This one, is from Erin Condren, a gold ruler. It's a bit tarnished now, but um, it's got a lot of use. Then this one I keep in my pencil case that's from Amazon, um, the silver one. And this is the one that I currently use, this copper one, I'm really into copper. And again, it's from Amazon, um, but I use it all the time whenever I'm sitting at my planner desk doing my memory planning. And the reason you would need a ruler is not just to draw straight lines, it's also to cut washing. I would sometimes put it at the edge of the washi and just rip. Um, but also straight lines. So if you're using an hourly planner and something starts at nine and you want to draw an arrow down to finishing at five or whatever, it's handy for that and I use them constantly. And speaking of cutting washi, sometimes I would use this on its own and tear the washi and then other times I would bring in this tool. And this is by um, EK Tools and it is a slice tool. And what it does, it allows you to kiss cut stickers. So sometimes you don't, you know, you want a more, you want a straight line. You don't want it to tear and not be as detailed or exact. And that's where this comes in. So, it just has a little ceramic blade up at the top. But I use this a lot in my memory planner for cutting washi in a straight line. Or maybe you want a sticker made smaller or something like that. Next are my scissors. And I have this larger pair that I use most of the time. It's like a holographic purple. And I don't think they sell them anymore, but they were from Amazon. And then this tiny little pair that are rose gold that were from Amazon as well. Um, that I use when I need to cut something really small and more detailed. It's easier to use these. But really I just use them for, sometimes I will cut washi off with it. Um, I use it to cut out my thumbnails now every week when I print them on the sticker paper. I will use it to cut out um, parts of journaling cards that I wanna use and stick in my planner. Lots of different things that you would use scissors for. And then last but not least is this guy. <laughs> and this is just a rubber, or as I think he's called them in America, if you're watching, an eraser. <laughs> And I love the fact that it has this cap on it that protects the top because um, it doesn't, when it's in a pencil case, rub off and get everywhere. 
yeah, it's a rubber. It's nothing really that exciting. Whenever I feel like sketching, I am able to rub out any mistakes. If I see a random mark on my planner, I rub it out. So very handy to have. And that is me. I hope you enjoyed that and you find it useful. You got some ideas for different things. Let me know if there's any sort of gadgets that you use that I haven't mentioned that you think is just fantastic for planning and I'll definitely check it out. Um, thank you so much for watching and take care and I'll speak to you soon.